We're jumping into a conversation talking about porn. Now, reality is studies show that so many people are watching porn right now. So this is an important conversation that we have to have and one I encourage you not to skip. Let's check it out. All right, so we're jumping into this conversation about pornography. And the reality is, is pornography is becoming such a major issue in our society. Now, so many people out there are wanting to tell us that pornography is good. It's healthy to be able to explore these things. It brings life and energy to your sex life. And I want to take a moment today and walk through some of the dangers and the realities of pornography. Now, obviously, as a Christian, I have strong beliefs about sexuality and I have strong beliefs about pornography and God's intention for all these things. And we're going to jump into that in a couple of more episodes from now. But today I want to take a second and I want to look at some of the stuff that's being produced from secular organizations. Truth is, lots of counselors, lots of, uh, of, of workers, lots of uh, web pages and sociologists are starting to talk about the fact that pornography actually is super dangerous. And I want to walk through some of those. One of the things when I was doing my study and preparing for this was that uh, was this thought process that pornography is supposed to be about empowering women. But according to so many resources, pornography is still directed and built towards men. Now, depending on who you're looking at, what country you're from, pornography is being viewed from both male and females. It's being viewed actually somewhere between 21 and 35% of porn is being consumed by those people. And the idea is trying to be said, wow, this is empowering women. But the truth is, studies have shown that almost all porn the woman typically submits to whatever the man wants to do, regardless of how uncomfortable, painful, or degrading it is. And what porn doesn't teach is that sex is about more than just physical, but it's also about emotional, and it's also about equality and a spiritual connection, not dominance and submission. You see, pornography gets this idea that it teaches that violence is not just okay, it actually teaches that it's sexy. A few years ago, a team of researchers looked at most popular porn films, and of the 304 films they watched, 88% of them contained physical violence. 49% of them, 49 of them contained verbal aggression, and the typical scene averaged 12 physical or verbal attacks. But unlike violence in regular movies where someone gets punched and gets mad and then they fight back, in the porn industry, 95% of the victims of aggression, they actually have a neutral response or they put on a picture of pleasure. In other words, in porn, women are getting beat up and they're smiling about it. Another dangerous thing that's happening because of porn is pornography is fueling sex trafficking. Truth is, right now, slavery is larger than it's ever been in its history. The truth is, right now, is it's way easier to traffic humans than it is to traffic drugs and other illegal content. And so what we're seeing happening is porn industry is fueling a drive for people to, to want to consume, which is financially consuming the idea for uh, porn companies to want to produce, and they're looking constantly, trying to find people. And, and, and yes, we paint the picture and the idea that these are just decent people who are going through hard times who have to end up in the porn world, or we, we hear the stories of sports stars turning to porn in order to offset their income. But the truth is, so much of our porn is actually being done by so many people who have been taken off the streets and put into these sex trafficking positions where they no longer have a say, where they no longer have control of their own coming and going, and where they are being forced to operate in these different actions. Plus, because of the fact that porn is stirring up a drive, the, the sex trade industry, which operates so strongly, is the same scenario. And so here's the reality is that we have seen porn rise, and we've seen sex trafficking rise at the same time. And so porn isn't just this victimless crime that's being done and to encourage people to have freedom in the bedroom or to understand their sexuality. 
It's having major issues of teaching people that porn is one-minded, one-sided, or sex is one-minded, one-sided. It has major issues with teaching people that violence, especially violence against women, is okay. And it has major sociological issues of encouraging and embracing and seeing the sex trafficking world become more and more powerful. The other thing that porn is, is it's extremely addictive. On the surface, cocaine and porn don't seem to have a lot in common, but studies show that viewing pornography tricks your brain into releasing the same pleasure of chemicals that drugs do. What is more is that your brain actually begins to rewire itself because of this artificial stimulation. It may sound crazy, but I'm telling you it's true. Deep inside our brain, there, there's something called the reward pathway. And it rewards you when you do something that promotes life, such as eating food or achieving something that you've worked hard for. Uh, you know, it teaches that when you go to the fridge, there's something good there and you can eat it and it will feel good to have an entire piece of cake. And this rewards you by releasing a chemical into your brain called dopamine. Normally, these chemicals are really handy. They help us feel pleasure and to bond with other people and to motivate us to come back to important activities. They make us feel happy about ourselves. But the problem is the reward path can be hijacked. The way substances like cocaine and opioid users feel high by triggering the reward path to release unnatural high levels of dopamine, porn is proven to do the exact same thing. And the surge of dopamine is causing more than just feelings. It goes pulsing through our brain and dopamine helps create new brain pathways that essentially lead to the user coming back to those behaviors every time to have that chemical release. The more a drug user hits up or a porn user looks at porn, the more these pathways get wired into our brain, making it easier and easier for the person to turn back to using whether they want to or not. Over time, the constant overload of chemicals causes other, uh, other parts of our brain to change as well. And just like a junk clean eventually requires more and more of a drug to get a buzz or even just to feel normal, porn users, porn users can quickly build up a tolerance as their brain adapts to the high level of dopamine that porn is releasing. In other words, even though porn is releasing dopamine into the brain, the user can't feel its effect as much, thus causing the user of porn to keep going back for more and more and more. And this widens the highway that is being triggered inside the brain. The more porn that we're looking at, the less satisfying it becomes, which drives us to want to get more porn going. This is why you can talk to people like, man, I had no interest. I didn't mean to get there. Or I want to stop, but I just don't know how to stop. Another thing that is so proven is that as much as it's taught that porn actually builds your sex life, studies upon studies upon studies are proving that porn actually ruins your sex life. The porn is painting a wrong picture. This is why it's so important for us with the next generation that we have to be so careful, moms and dads, you have to be so careful that your kids are hearing about sex and learning about sex from you and not from their friends and from the porn world because porn has this really bad idea of what healthy sex is. Like we said, it's already proven that it's it's male-dominated. We already proven that it's it has tons of violence all through it and, and, and vulgarness attached to it. We know that if you are watching porn, it continually makes regular things seem less interesting. The fact is, is we have so many studies that prove that people who are consuming porn have less sex with their spouses because they no longer find the sex with their spouses at the same level of enjoyment because they're not doing what the porn industry taught. Plus, our own bodies have become numb to what sex is supposed to actually be. See, porn doesn't increase our sex life and bring more freedom. Porn actually proven ruins deep, authentic Real relationships. Because it makes sex about being something that's just purely physical and ignores so much more of what sex actually is about. Sex isn't just about being physical. Sex isn't just about what we can get out of it. Of course, sex is supposed to be enjoyable and fun and all of those things. But it's also supposed to be about two people being together, in love, being with each other, spiritually, emotionally, 
physically connected and doing something that is so intimate and so beautiful, the Bible says, is to be done within the confines of marriage. True covenant commitment to each other. Not something that is all about self-seeking. So I want to encourage you. There's so much temptation to look at porn. There's so much temptation to justify that porn is healthy and is good. But if you dig just a little bit, you'll realize that it actually has so many struggles. In fact, in the, the notes below, in the comments below, we're actually going to put a whole bunch of links to so much research that's being done by secular organizations talking about the effects of porn and the danger that it creates. Next week, I'm going to be jumping on talking about pornography and how do we get freedom from it? How do we walk in freedom from porn? If you're watching porn and don't want to watch it anymore, we're going to give a couple of really great ideas of how you can walk in freedom. If you've enjoyed today, please do us a favor, put something in the comments, and please subscribe. You don't want to miss this month's content.